Hello, in this video we're going to look at ethanol physiology. So the physiology of alcohol, how we metabolize it, how we absorb it, etc. So we begin with the liver. Here is the liver. The liver has a portal vein. The portal vein essentially is what drains all the GIT stuff um, into. So the GIT veins drains into the portal vein and the portal vein drains into the liver. Um, and here we have the liver cells, also known as hepatocytes. Here is the liver uh, sinusoid. And within the area, there are also liver macrophages called Kupfer cells. There are also hepatic stellate cells here, which are normally at rest. You know, they stay dormant. Um, they're not really active. Anyway, that was the liver. Um, here are your intestinal cells. It can, it, it, intestinal cells of the stomach and the small intestine, for example. And here is the lumen. So, um... And on these intestinal cells, sorry, there are mucus. And mucus is a uh, barrier. It, it helps. It's a barrier from microbes and stuff like that. Now, normally residing on the mucus, um, throughout the gut, throughout our gastrointestinal tract, there are commensal bacteria, mainly gram-negative bacteria. Now, commensal bacteria are just bacteria that live there in unison with the, uh, with the organism, which is us in this case. Now, ethanol has an impact on gram-negative bacteria, and we will see what happens. So ethanol, which is alcohol, will be in the lumen when we drink it, right? Um, and now chronic alcohol consumption, it causes a few local changes in the gastrointestinal tract. Firstly, it actually increases gut permeability and promotes bacterial growth, which may lead to increase in circulatory uh, lipopolysaccharide. Now, lipopolysaccharide is a antigen uh, found on these bacteria normally. So when you have a lot of growth of these bacteria due to alcohol and the increase in gut permeability, the lipopolysaccharide of the bacteria can get into circulation. That's essentially the overall picture. So that was the lipopolysaccharide story for now, and we'll get back to it. But first, let's go back back to the gastrointestinal tract. Ethanol, of course, is absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract, mainly in the stomach and the small intestine. Okay, so let us now look at the effect lipopolysaccharide, LPS, has on our body. So LPS travels to the liver. Here, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, is recognized by Kupfer cells in the liver through toll-like receptors, which are immune cell receptors, essentially. When Kupfer cells recognizes the lipopolysaccharides, it begins secreting cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and interleukin-12. These cytokines have many effects, one of which is recruiting more white blood cells into the area, such as macrophages. And thus, you know, attracting macrophages, it promotes an inflammatory response. The cytokines also stimulate hepatic stellate cells to become activated and to secrete interleukin-8, um, an effective chemotactic agent for recruiting circulating neutrophils, which will further enhance the inflammatory response. So infiltration of neutrophils and macrophages together with hepatic uh, stellate cell activation leads to inflammation as well as fibrosis. The stellate cells, when activated, um, it, it actually becomes myofibrocytes and begins producing a lot of collagen, which, actually, which is the, culp the culprit uh, for fibrosis. So we just saw the effects lipopolysaccharide has on the body and how inflammation leads to fibrosis. Now let's go to ethanol, which was absorbed into circulation. Let us see the biochemical effects ethanol has on the liver. So ethanol is absorbed in the portal vein and it travels to the liver, like the lipopolysaccharide. Let us zoom into one of these hepatic cells and see the metabolism that occurs uh, for liver, uh, for alcohol. So excess consumption of ethanol, we have ethanol moving into the liver cells. There are several pathways of ethanol metabolism. So we have excess consumption of ethanol. Ethanol moves from the outside to the inside of the liver cell. 
ethanol gets metabolized, converted into acetaldehyde. And there are two main pathways. The first one and the main one is done um, by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH. And in this reaction, NAD is reduced to um, NADH. The second pathway is through the cytochrome pathway. Um, so ethanol is still converted to acetaldehyde, but, cytochrome, but the, this reaction results in the production of react reactive oxygen species, ROS. So therefore, the liver usually uses the um, alcohol dehydrogenase pathway, 75%, compared to the cytochrome pathway, 25%. Because if we have too much ac acetaldehyde and react reactive oxygen species, like this stuff damages our body. So for example, it can cause formation of DNA adducts, um, resulting in mutations, which can result in some, you know, um, problems. But of course, if we have so much ethanol, you can imagine what happens. Um, we start using the cytochrome um, pathway, and so we produce a lot of react reactive oxygen species. Anyway, when we have um, a lot of acetaldehyde, this can also be converted to acetate through the enzyme um, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. In this reaction, NAD again is reduced to NADH. So we are producing a lot of NADH when we drink a lot of ethanol. Just keep that in mind. We have a lot of NADH. So acetate can be converted to acetyl uh, acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is a main precursor to fatty acid uh, synthesis. Now, fa fatty acid synthesis is actually stimulated when we have a lot of NADH because when because NADH is used um, uh, is used in this uh, convert in this uh, in the synthesis of fatty acids so NADH is oxidized to NAD so um, all the hydrogens are being used um, to make up the fatty acids so fatty acids are a lot of fatty acids are being made um, and also the fatty acids are being packaged up to try triglycerides triacylglycerides and so NADH also stimulates this, um, this reaction. When we have a lot of NADH, um, which, which we see in, um, in excessive alcohol intake, a lot of NADH thus inhibits uh, you know, fatty acid breakdown. So it inhibits tri triglyceride uh, breakdown to fatty acids, and it also inhibits fatty acid uh, breakdown to acetyl-CoA. It inhibits beta oxidation because we don't need any more NADH when we have so much. So it inhibits the, you know, this reaction. So I hope that all made sense. But in summary, um, this is the main concept we have to take out of excessive alcohol intake. When we, when we have excessive alcohol intake, this results in an increase in fatty acid synthesis, but a decrease in um, fatty acid oxidation, so fatty acid breakdown. When this happens, it basically means that we have a lot of fat in the liver, and so this results in steatosis. So we have, you know, two main things happening, or three. We have inflammation, we have fibrosis, and we have steatosis as a result of excessive alcohol intake. And this all results in um, liver cirrhosis. I wrote here liver fibrosis, but it should be liver cirrhosis but same concept. Just to finish off this uh, metabolic pathway, when we have glucose, right? So glucose gets transported into liver cells through the glue transporter. Glucose goes through glycolysis to make pyruvate. Pyruvate or then goes through other pathways. But glycolysis actually produces um, NADH. But you can when, when we drink a lot of ethanol, we also produce a lot of NADH, right? So when we have excessive ethanol consumption, we actually, you know, we inhibit glycolysis. So we inhibit glucose breakdown. Similarly, when we have, uh, similarly, it, you know, a lot of NADH will inhibit pyruvate conversion to acetyl-CoA. So thus, we, we, can, we can cause... Um, you know, we can cause hyperglycemia, but actually we don't, um, excessive ethanol intake 
um, causes the person not to be hungry, thus can lead to hypoglycemia. Glycogen, um, glycogen stores are also not being broken down, um, thus leading to hypoglycemia. Just to complete uh, this whole diagram now, um, excessive ethanol inta uh, intake not only affects the liver, but also affects uh, our neurological system. So for example, excessive ethanol intake can lead to vitamin B1 uh, deficiency. No, the vitamin B1 is known as thymine deficiency. And thymine, def thymine is very important in um, uh, our, you know, uh, our, is very important for our body because thymine is responsible for a lot of metabolic uh, pathways. So thymine deficiency results in three things. So thymine deficiency can result in a condition known as beriberi, um, Wernicke's um, encephalopathy, uh, basically neurological uh, pathology, and also um, Korsakoff's uh, psychosis. And this is essentially memory loss. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the physiology of alcohol or alcohol physiology. Thank you for watching. Bye.